in a vacuum, stay puffed spacemen don't stay puffed for long. That's what happens to you in space if you don't have a space suit. Oh, it's like a raisin. <laughs> Well, as much as I love busting out the vacuum chamber, what does the marshmallow astronaut have to do with the moon? Okay, well, as we know, the surface of the moon is a vacuum, and some of the conspiracy theories contend that the moon landing footage is fake because some of the things that they did are impossible to do in a vacuum. That's right, there's the one theory about the flag. A lot of people think it looks like it's flapping in the wind. Now, that would be impossible in a vacuum because no air, no wind. Someone actually told me a good one about the footprints. The idea is that the astronauts couldn't leave such distinct footprints on the moon because there's no moisture in a vacuum and the moisture is what hold the footprint together. So how are we going to test this one? I think we're going to need a bigger vacuum. And like way more marshmallows. These vacuum theories are some of the more convincing in the conspiracy canon. After all, it appears logical that the breeze that fluttered the flag just couldn't be there on the moon. And anyone who's taken a walk on a beach knows only wet sand leaves a definite footprint. So with no moisture on the moon, then these images must be fake. Okay, so we're gonna have to replicate the conditions of the moon as close as possible here on Earth. Well, I think the closest we're gonna get are the vacuum chambers in Alabama at NASA. Yeah, but we're not allowed to go into the vacuum chambers. So the experiments that we make, they're all gonna have to be operated remotely. Okay, well, I'd like to do the flag test and build it to the original NASA specifications and then figure out some way to turn it like the astronauts did. All right, well, I'm going to take care of the footprint myth. I was wondering if you could help me with an experiment to demonstrate the whole theory behind this myth. Boys, boys, don't fight. Plenty of me to go around. Outside M7, Tori sets up the demo with the closest thing he can find to lunar dust. Actually, it's plain old sand one half of which Tori moistens. Now, conspiracy theorists say that this clean of an imprint is impossible because you need moisture, and since there's no moisture on the moon, this cannot happen. Now, uh, I'm gonna demonstrate what they're talking about with the sand here. I have dry sand and I have wet sand. We're gonna have Carrie put on a moon boot. You know how to moonwalk? Okay, so the answer is no. She's gonna step in both, and we're gonna see what kind of impression is left behind. Okay, ready? Yep. All right, do the wet. The wet sand is definitely cleaner than the dry sand. Yeah, you've got some really good hard lines in the wet sand. Yep, the moisture makes the difference. Without it, the imprint is indistinct and nothing like Buzz Aldrin's famous boot print. Now all we need to do is go to the moon, try this for real. I'm just kidding, we don't have the budget. To the moon, Tori! To the moon! <laughs> Harry, Grant, and Tori are taking on tales from Moon Hoax HQ. Conspiracy theorists believe the vacuum in space means these footprints are fake, and that flag shouldn't be flapping. This whole idea that the conspiracy theorists have is based on the fact that there is no wind or atmosphere in a vacuum, nothing to, to blow the flag around. And they would be right about that fact. Ow. Sorry. The shaft is a little tight in the hole. My belief is that the astronauts moved the flag around as they were planting it in the surface of the moon, and that momentum is actually what they saw as a breeze. So to test this, I'll be building a replica of the lunar flag assembly, and then we'll put that in a vacuum, and I'll build a mechanism to rotate it the same way the astronauts did. Then we'll see if we get the same flapping motion. And with both remote control devices ready to go, the team heads for the George Marshall Space Center in Alabama. Oh my God. So these are all vacuum chambers? How great is that, that NASA is opening their doors to let us come in and test this myth? That's how confident they are that this is a myth. All right, close the door. Let's see if we can pull our feelings out. You know, I heard this was actually a fuel tank from a Saturn V rocket that they converted into a vacuum chamber. They're just like us. They recycle their old stuff. And to show us their recycled stuff is NASA vacuum technician Michael Terry. So you know how to use this thing? Oh, yeah. And you're actually going to let us use it? Yeah, I think I will. Let's just uh, be careful. He's obviously never seen the show before. It's like, it looked like they cut the arms off of a spacesuit. Is that, and wait, does your head go here? Yeah, that's where it goes. <laughs> that's awesome. How much are these gloves worth? Uh, approximately, they're worth almost a half a million dollars. Michael really hasn't seen the show before. Cap out, cap out. It's a portable hug. 
So you gonna show us how to use these? Sure, I'll try to do my best to get you guys to do your hand check. Fingernails need to be kind of shortened up and clipped. Uh, the arms are everything I expected. They're all 1950s pop space movie looking kind of robot arms. The only downside is I gotta cut my fingernails. All right, well, let's move on to our first moon test. All right, got your boot? Yeah, I got my boot. All right. Coming. Some of the first words spoken from the moon's surface answered the simple but powerful question. It's almost like a powder. What did it feel like? I can see the footprints of my uh, boot and the fine bands of the particles. But did Buzz Aldrin really make such an impression on the moon? To find out if moon boots make boot prints, Tori's borrowed the real deal. Look what I got, a real moon boot. Wow. Uh, isn't that cool? That looks just like Adam's. Yeah. So this is an, the actual article. Yep. Now all we have to do is put it on the moon stomper, smash it in some dust, and see if it leaves a footprint. This conspiracy theory is pretty interesting. They say that because there's a vacuum on the moon and there's no water vapor. Does that fit? You feel your toe there? You can't leave a clear imprint from your boot the way they did in the photos from the lunar landing. Just 840 pounds of lunar material returned to Earth from all of the Apollo missions. There's not much of it to go around. So for this test, NASA has given us a lunar regolith simulant. It's manufactured to test equipment that is going to the moon. It's very similar to lunar dust in the fact that each particle is very sharp. Dirt on Earth it has been weathered, so it's very smooth. So this is as close to lunar dust as we can get. That's likely to be the key to this myth, a comparison of the physical properties of sand and lunar regolith. Down here, a footprint in dry sand collapses because the weathered particles can't bind together without water. But up on the moon, other bonding agents are at work, one of which the irregular and jagged shapes of lunar dust could cause it to stick together in those famous boot prints. Will the irregular shape of lunar regolith in conjunction with the vacuum result in a clean boot print and bust the myth? <laughs> Give it a shot. All right. The rig is ready to take its one-legged step, and the vacuum chamber has been uh, vacuumed. Boot stop, vacuum. Here we go. In three, two, one. Yeah! <laughs> Take that! Yeah! It works! In your face, conspiracy theorist! Yep, it really does work. Moon landing one, conspiracy theorist zero. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So it seems you can make a clean, stable footprint in a vacuum. Look at that. We made a footprint inside of a vacuum. And there was no water vapor, which is what this conspiracy theory is all about. Well, the gravity is six times stronger on Earth than it is on the moon. So if we made a footprint here, we're definitely making one on the moon. So I guess this conspiracy theory is busted. 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 Now NASA will let us out of here.